Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Inside Lanfear Sports. I'm your host, Kobe Sandor. In today's episode, we are sitting down with varsity baseball coach Adam Woolley. Welcome to the show, coach. Hey, thanks, Kobe. Thanks for being here. Okay, coach, let's get right into it. Last year's season was an average season. Your record was 16-20, and 20, and you lost your last game against Country Day in the district finals. What are you expecting? Are you expecting a better season this year? Well, yeah, I mean, we can call last season, uh, you know, obviously not a successful season from wins and losses. But one of the things that we did was we decided to make a marked change in our culture and the way that we go about, you know, presenting ourselves. And for a long, long time, it, we took our lumps. We, our record at one point, I believe, was I think we were at 3 and 15. And then we straightened some things out, added some players and, and got on the right track. So I wanted to take that momentum and start building it toward this year. And uh, from what I've seen early on, I'm real encouraged. I'm, I'm happy that uh, guys are coming, they're putting in their work, they understand what I meant by culture. And, you know, as far as like expectations, I think, you know, truly the sky's the limit. So we can, we can do some really good things. And uh, what is, what's your record prediction for this season? Uh, it's hard to tell. I mean, we play one of the tougher non-league schedules. I mean, when you look at our Friday games, which are non-league, we play Lance Cruz North, we play Royal Oak, Troy Athens. Teams that are pretty good, Detroit Western, we play them twice. Um, so, you know, I, it, it's, I want to believe that we can go in winning every single one of those games, but it, the emphasis is going to be on winning a league championship and putting our best foot forward in those days. So, you know, record-wise, I always try to strive for, you know, at least trying to win two out of every three games. Um, if you put yourself into that position where you win 67% of your games, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Thank you. You have 17 varsity players, nine of whom are seniors. Who are some of the seniors you focus on a little more, and how do you feel about the team next year with all the seniors leaving? Well, it's not a matter of focusing necessarily on just a senior and, and this particular kid. Um, you know, bottom line is what we like to do is we like to inform everybody of their roles, even in the preseason. And, and some guys may look at their role as small versus a larger role. But they, the fact of the matter is um, one way to look at it is like, Let's say you go in and you're, you're asked to be a relief pitcher, right? And you're sitting around for inning after inning after inning. Well, when you take the mound in that, say, sixth, seventh inning, you become the number one guy at that automatic time. So it's very important that every kid prepares himself as if he were the man and, and then just fit into that role and accept that role. And that's a very difficult thing to do because everybody wants to play. But the problem is, is that we can only play nine at a time. So, um, you know, it's more about roles and, and those guys, you know, really taking hold of that role and establishing that role and then thriving in that role. Okay, coach, we talk seniors. Let's move to freshmen. You have three <laughs> players that were brought up on varsity this year. Who are they and what are your thoughts about them? Uh, we brought up Noah Hurst, Dylan Chargo, and uh, Jake Malik. And um, one of it became a necessity out of uh, catching. You know, uh, when we watched both Malik and Chargo behind the plate. Our pitching staff really had a good time, you know, throwing and communicating with them. And they're young, and there's going to be some things that they need to work out and work on. Um, but I do believe that because of the culture that we were talking about, our pitchers, our pitching staff, for instance, you know, the other day I was watching Preston Young, one of our senior pitchers, and Zach Hilliard talk to the catchers about communication and make sure that they understood what their role was and that they can have a back and forth interaction between the two. So that kind of maturation is going to be important for those guys. In the case of Noah Hurst, it was just a matter of his ability to play multiple positions, including if, if ever was needed, he could catch as well. Um, he's kind of a plug and play kid. You put him here, he can play it well. You put him here, he can play it well. And um, he just seemed to thrive, especially in the infield position. And um, his bat has come a long way. Thank you, Coach. Talk, let's talk about coaching staff, also about this year's schedule. What are your expectations? Well, coaching staff first, um, you know, I, I, my JV coach is Mr. Mike Kobus. And he's been an established coach around here for a long, long time. Um, you know, Kobus, uh, when, he's, when he's dressed in his baseball pants, uh, a lot of the kids like to poke a little bit of fun at him. But the truth of the matter is he brings a lot of, like, discipline and a lot of wisdom to his position, and he's been a very, very valuable JV coach. Uh, all too often I've had JV coaches use this place as a stepping stone to go get another varsity job, and that's great because you get good coaches, but they don't stay for long, and I like the consistency within the program. And then my assistant coach, Keith Lally, is one of the best around. Um, a lot of people will go to Keith in the off season for, uh, for lessons, and we're just very fortunate to have him here and bring his expertise to the table. Finally, Coach, 
What are your goals this year, and can we expect a district championship? Well, first of all, uh, you know, we're going to put a huge emphasis on trying to win our league. I, I think that that's been something that for almost 10 years now has kind of gone by the wayside. We've been fortunate enough to capture some league championships in that time frame, but not enough. And I, don't, I just don't think the importance is there or the understanding is there from our players of why it's important to win a league championship. And the reason it's important to win a league championship is because it shows consistency in winning that you can come day in and day out and do it day in and day out. In our league, we have to play three games. So it shows what kind of resiliency you have and what kind of focus that you have. And that's very important to me. I want to make sure that our players understand that winning a league championship needs to be a priority because... The truth of the matter is, is a district championship is a cross. It, it's just, it's a crap, um, crap shoot. You go in, you could run into a hot pitcher. You go in, your bats might not be working that day. So you prepare yourselves in order to, to win at that level. But when it's a single game elimination, you have to play your best and be your best. And uh, the expectation, of course, is to go in and win. So, you know, if you ask me if we, if we can win a district championship, I'm going to say to you, our competition's tough. But that's why we're playing the likes of Detroit Western. That's why we're playing the likes of Lance Cruz North, Bishop Foley, so that we can see some of the best teams in the state and go up against them. And then once we get to our district, which has some of the best teams in Division Two, Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, Country Day, Cranbrook, you know, we, we can look at them and say, you know what, we've been down this road before. We're ready and we're prepared to play it. Thank you for your time, Coach. I wish you luck this year. Thanks, Colby. Tune in next week for another episode of Inside Lanphier Sports. Thank you.